are now tuned in to the Free Play Media Podcast Network. Thank God that's our name. Chris Denman, Travis Sorrell with uh, the always pleasurable Greg Fitzsimmons. He's at Helium Comedy Club all weekend long right here in St. Louis. Greg, great to have you back, buddy. The bridge. I like it. The black and the white together. <laughs> We're yeah. building a bridge Bringing together. St. Louis together. Have, do you feel we've healed since the two and a half years ago we first Ferguson spoke to you? Ferguson is fixed. I don't know if you noticed this. Greg yeah. fixed that, Ferguson. That was right around when we talked, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half years ago? Yeah, it was. Right. And things have been pretty smooth since then. Mm. I've been watching the news. Yeah, it. things are going Learned, well. Learned, moved on. Uh huh. Improved is the word I use a lot. Well, <laughs> no, but this is great. You look good. Yeah, um, I feel oh, like you're kind of looking me over yeah. a little bit. He's like, this guy <laughs> ate a horse since the last time I saw him. No, you look yeah, yeah. like you look like a sophomore who's dressed up for a Model UN conference. Just like, like we're like at the show, Like it's your Tram. dad's blazer, uh-huh. it's your brother's shirt. Yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> it's like the jeans, jeans so you know I'm casual, Yes. right? Yes, yeah. so you you're have still to re- cool. You're still cool sophomore. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. Trav, you laughing a little hard over there, uh, I, Look, hey, man. It's, you want so to just start in on Joe your Boy, homeless ass with Corolla that thing? Corolla and Alfred Simmons have all attacked your outfit at some point over oh, the last year right? and a half. Oh, is that right? company. Yeah. You've yeah. got, yeah, you've been on a roll. Right. They had us on when we were out in L.A., though. See, we can't say that about Craig. We're not a big enough. Dude. All bullshit aside, your podcast. I, how are you making this? Th- you're steamrolling. You're steamrolling. Do- you're kicking ass. You can't for real. stop me. You can't. Big guest lately. I had Zach Galifianakis last week. Never and, heard of him. Uh, Louis Anderson's on this week. Uh, Andy Ma- Richter next week. Kevin and Nealon. I I Nealon said this in an email. Had. Is that the most fun or one of the most fun podcasts you've done recently? He's my, he's, I, I shouldn't say it, but I think he's my favorite guest. I've had him on probably 10 times. And he's just such a, he's so fast, but laid back at the same time. Right. And you, you play that and you, I don't know, like I've interviewed him too. And I don't know if it's, he's in character or what, but whatever's happening, it's fantastic yeah. with you two working together. Man. Oh yeah. It, it, Thank you very good. much. Thanks for listening. Yeah, absolutely. And then who else? Have you, oh, Zach and uh, Mike Gibbons. He's a huge name. Yeah. Mike <laughs> Gibbons, my sidekick. Well, people don't know he's. He's so He's talented. been my best yeah. friend since college. Oh, wow. And, you know, he started out not in show business. Right. And then uh, he just kind of found his way in through more as an editor and a writer while I was doing stand-up. And now years later, we're both writing for TV, and he's starting to do some stand-up. But he's uh, he created Tosh.0, mm. um, the uh, Craig Kilborn show, um, Spike Ferriston show, Norm Macdonald's sports show on Comedy Central. Um, he's always he's, creating. He's done it all. Uh, oh, and, uh, and he, he won an Emmy for creating, um, uh, what's the one where they sing in Cars? Uh, the uh, car, carpool, carpool karaoke. karaoke. Yeah, what, what's the host name? James Gordon. Yeah, he created that one also. Oh, that's that's the connection, and your boy uh, Ben writes for Gordon also, right? Who's right, Ben my, Hoffman. Ben Hoffman. Who plays Wheeler Walker Jr., he does. the country does. music star. Can we talk about that? You you guys are actual friends, correct? Sure. So <laughs> we've yeah. interviewed him, and it was a blast over the phone. He's like, yeah, hey, anytime, whatever. We interviewed him in person here. He's the worst. It was terrible. He's the worst <laughs> I'm not, interview. No, I'm serious. And, he's yeah. fu- and on the phone, he was like, that was actually really fun. I have to yeah. do all these horrible radio hits. Yeah. You guys are great. He was super nice. In person, he came in hour late. And oh, he's really? on tour. He was on tour. Yeah. So we gave him some slight work. Oh, whatever. We couldn't tell if we are just the worst ever or if were. he was just Well, tired. you're not good, but thank no. you. the thing yeah. is, he, he is in character. And as a normal person, Ben Hoffman is one of the funniest guys you ever met. Agreed. This neurotic Jew who is just like, and then when, he go, but the, when you interview him in character, he's playing a subdued country music guy. Right. So it's, right. I find it a little bit harder to interview him that way than uh, as a normal person. Travis. Has, has the podcast done, like, 
did it, did it, has it done for you as you anticipated? I would imagine when you started, and a lot of comedians feel this way, like when they started, they're not necessarily sure what the podcast is going to be right. or how it's going to be received. Has it, has it been everything that you thought it was going to be? Has it exceeded expectations? How, how do you feel about well, where it's it gone? Well, it started really organically because I do a radio show on Howard Stern's mm-hmm. channel. And so what I started doing was just keeping the guests afterwards for another hour and just doing a podcast because my producer was like, you already got them here. Why not launch one? This is eight years ago. Yep. So it was before all the podcasts started popping up. And then it was just easy. And then people liked it so much that I added a second one. And I did that up until about nine months ago. I did two a week. Yeah. Mm. And, it, and all of a sudden, I started having people calling me for ads. And then I had agents calling me to oh, represent me for that's ads. That's crazy. And now I'm doing all these ads. And there's money, like serious yeah. money coming in. Right. And, I, and it's helping my tour dates. So it's like on a commercial level, it's amazing, but creatively it's even better because it's just like, you know, there's, I don't have to do anything. There's no boss. Nobody tells me what to do. And, um, and I find that like, I'm not trying to please a certain demographic. I'm just being myself. And then with the internet, (laughs) people just find you. So you, your audience is sort of made up of people that have chosen to be your fans as opposed to stepping into like a radio show where they might go like, you know, our listeners are 18 to 34 and you need to honk the horn a lot and talk right. about tits. And, uh, right. you know, yeah. it's like, I mean, not that hey. I don't do that. I talk about tits a lot. Sure. Mm, yeah. Like, I love tits. Travis, is this clean? The horn. Mm. What? No, we're oh. go. Just go. Go, go. Like, tits to me <laughs> are so amazing because right. they hide them. They yeah. hide them from you. They what don't you, need to hide them. What you got them. there? What's going on? Right. Yeah. It's a big game. It you is. You can't see them. Right. You can't see them. And then one day they go, I you play. can see them. Yeah. <laughs> Now you can touch them and suck them and see them. You right. know? It's, uh, it's disappointing that they make it such a game at times. Well, it's like, you know, I like feet. Like, I have a foot fetish. So I hear. And so what I enjoy is that the feet, they put them right out there. They have no idea that I have a fetish. So the trick's on them. Right. When they wear sandals, yes. it's like I'm staring at a pair of tits. And genius yes. is what that is. I switched. I made a mind switch. Uh-huh. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on feet. Tojitsu? Tit jitsu? How do we how do we work that in? To jitsu. To jitsu. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. encourage that. He's Greg. getting aroused. <laughs> yeah. He's so. kidding about that. Oh my God. So okay, give you us like the feet. Uh, I'm not a feet person. I've no. never been a feet person. I never. I, I I I get people have quirks. I just for feet. I'm like I'm like, but I'm. I just I want to get to the titties and ass right, right. now. I'm like, oh, it's there. I got to get to it. Like, mm, can't, I'm not, well, I'm not the problem is black women's feet are different mm. because they grow the tone, the, the big toenail. They grow long. Listen to this breakdown. It drives me crazy. It's like clip your goddamn toenail. You got beautiful feet. They're lovely, but that that looks like a, looks like there's a cockfight going on in your right. shoe. Yeah, the spur. That's yeah. what you call that. The spur. Yeah. yeah. A rooster has a spur. And then, no, they, and then no. they paint it and they glue a, mm. a fake diamond on right. it. There's yeah. too much going on. I like a nicely clipped Asian foot. You know, a what, little does, bit of Does it need to be washed it, clean? Or is wash it, it clean. Yeah. Then go to the gym and work out. Oh, now then let, a little funk on it. Yeah. Okay. How do you know you're a, a foot person, though? Like, when does it... Does it just immediately happen in the moment? Like, when do you realize? You like, are now. Now that I've said right. it. Okay, now because I'm about to say, it, I feel you like You spoke it into existence. Noticing. Yeah. yeah. Right. It up now. Okay. That's, do, you say, do you bank those? Do you have like a little shoe store in your head that you, uh, mm. that you pull out it's when you need? It's just called YouPorn. YouPorn search <laughs> There it is. YouTube even. YouTube, Again, I would jokes imagine. on them. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I do a, look up celebrities' feet sometimes. Like, who's your uh, favorite really? celebrity foot? Oh, Uma Thurman by far. That was such a quick answer. Post, That's kind of yeah. scary how quick that answer was. Yeah. Post car wreck too. She's she's doing a lot of complaining about the. She didn't uh, the hurt her toes during the car wreck. <laughs> okay, you would know. Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. Speaking of, you've written for award shows. Sure. Like uh, we talked AVNs? about it before. It's, we well we I, like because I, I think. Uh, what Seth Meyers did at the Golden Globes was pretty solid. And, of course, you got Kimmel coming up here soon for the Academy Awards. Like, what? how would you prep in this – I don't know if we call it a new era in Hollywood, but how, how would a writer prep for an award show when you have this movement that has taken place? I feel like – Well, how do you top Seth? I was never a Seth Meyers fan. Okay. But I am now. He, he attacked that. Yeah. I mean, he went for it, and I thought that the material was strong enough that it didn't make people uncomfortable. Right. And um, he really nailed it. So I think that's the way to go is you have to just, you have to be on the right side of the issue, obviously. True. <laughs> but, you know, you talk about it. I mean, it's tough because as a man, 
It's good that you soundproof the studio. <laughs> As a man... Uh, we want it to be like Marin's Garage. You're right. That's, a, that's the feel that we're going yeah. for here. Is there a helicopter <laughs> landing next door? <laughs> there's, a constru- there's a construction company 10 feet that way with world-class studio in here that has big bands coming through, celebrities. Right. Yeah. No, so- it's great. It's world-class. I mean, we parked, and I <laughs> and we're in this abandoned... There's like abandoned vehicles in the uh-huh. parking lot out Well, front. you're in St. Louis. We have to set a tone. We walk through some bar where there's a $5 shot and a beer special. Yep. Through a labyrinth of back hallways, mm-hmm. and then we come in here. You didn't touch the paint cans, did you? No. Okay, thank That's you. That's all lead? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You have to go through. There's I watched a lot this of, documentary last night about, uh, you're about the water in St. Louis. You're about 30 minutes away from it right here in uh, Atomic Homefront. I mean, that is shocking. Isn't that insane? How well, now you have to have look cancer? at it too. Cancer, all the backs up. Now, is the government going to buy all the houses within 30 mi- miles of that? Like, right, seriously, what's right. going to happen with that? Have you heard of this? I have not. He's from that area, mm-hmm. by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you should see his Are you really? Yes, wow. Yeah, it's Atomic Homefront. It actually affects... Way more than I, you would I realize. I would never have thought that you know a city would do something wrong to the African American population. That's crazy talk, Chris. Uh, Please, enough. Yeah, look, just <laughs> smoke the crack we dropped off <laughs> in the '80s. You'll get over it. <laughs> don't, mind, to give don't mind the mosquito <laughs> dust that we're putting in your yeah, neighborhood. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so give it to us. On, so we had Dove David off in uh, David off in uh, last week. We had Rachel Feinstein in. Recently, so we're having a lot of people from crashing in. Oh, that's yeah. That's been a big part. Uh, he had to remember. He's like, oh, they are on crashing. Right? <laughs> well, because everybody is. It Everyone. Is. Yeah. That's so great, though. Even seeing, like, and granted, he's on uh, Superior Donuts now, but I remember seeing, like, Jermaine Fowler yeah. on there. And I'm like, hey, we've interviewed that guy. Like, right. what's he doing? And then now it's an outlet for everybody to go on and get a credit. And it's fantastic to see what's it meant to you to be part of that. And again, with Judd Apatow, who you've known for forever, yeah. I'm sure. And it seems to be, are they coming back for a new season for sure? Do you know? I literally will be checking my phone during this interview because we're supposed <laughs> to find out any day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so it's hard because, you know, I got my stand-up dates booked. Right. But then About a they, year in advance, six months in advance at least yeah, for stand-up Yeah, so if dates. they say we're starting on Monday, which is when we would start, then it's like, all right, well, I'm supposed to be in... Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey next week. Wow. Right. And the week after that, I'm supposed to be in Austin. And so what happens is what happened last year is I ended up working Monday through Friday and crashing. And then I'd, I'd leave half in, in the New morning, York? sometimes on Friday. Well, no, it started off in LA. Okay. We wrote for like six weeks in LA. And so I would fly out every weekend and do shows and then write on the show all week. And then uh, in the spring, we went to New York and we all set right. up there for like four months and we shot. And I would fly back to LA a lot. I'd fly out and do tour dates. Sheesh. It was it was nuts. Family back at home in Southern California too. That's I think rough. So. Man. That's what I'm told. So. <laughs> yeah, they sent what, postcards. Right. What comic would sneak over to uh, visit your wife and family while you're out of town? Dove Davidoff. Of course. <laughs> yeah. There it, it is. Like the and then you know guy. what? And that's fine because he's a gentle man. Yeah. I just I, I don't want I don't, you don't want, want anybody Joe going him. over there. <laughs> <Joe> going. <laughs> Just rooting around doing God knows what. Well, I, he's like a prop comic. He would bring sex toys mm. and all kinds. I'd find <laughs> rabbit ears and shit in the right. corner when he was gone. Who brought a karaoke machine into our bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, you eating carrots in the bedroom? What, do you have salads before you go to sleep? What the hell is happening here? Joe Coy ruining your marriage. Yeah. One, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, time. too. I'm gonna do it. He's not very good did, on that. No, well, I'm curious. Did you, in, did you, and I'm sure you could be frank with them, did you enjoy Judd Apatow's Netflix special? You. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was actually one of one of two people he sent it to for notes before he made oh, nice. the final cut. Yeah. How I does just, a guy like that who's done so much recently, so obviously for so many comedians, how does how do you respond to him when he sends you notes about his stand-up? Something he is, it's been so long since he's I done couldn't it. believe it. When he sent it to me, the rough cut, and asked me for notes, I was like, You gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna get Judd Apatow right. notes. <laughs> but what I just said was like the stuff I thought was really strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, mostly just that, like you, because it was long. When he right. sent me, it was over the hour. Judd Apatow going long? Is that no a way. thing? <laughs> Look, you guys sort of trap me in trash talking Judd Apatow. No, trap This will be enough no, he, for Twitter. Yeah, he, yeah, right. he, talk, he talks about, about it, Apatow. too. Yes. He talks about all his movies. He has to edit like 40 minutes. Oh, off of it. yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. long, right. But his stand-up, no, I thought it was extremely strong. It was personal. It was funny. It showed chops. He worked his ass off on it. You know, he was on right. the road for like, a year just hammering it out and uh i thought it turned out great is that a tough transition like going from 
being in the writer's room and often writing for other actors, other comedians, and then transitioning to doing your own thing on the road is, is or it just, just comes with the territory and your experience. It's nothing, it's just a switch. Once you get on the road and you're ready to do your own thing, it's... Yeah, it's like getting in two different cars. You know, okay. you just, it's just different. And, uh, you know, when you're writing for somebody else, you really do, you think of their voice. You're, mm. you just, uh, like a lot of times I will... I will ask Pete, can I wear his clothes? Mm -hmm. And I'll sit <laughs> sure. and nice. I'll take all the same drugs he takes every day. Kind of look like I look. <laughs> right. I have sex yeah, with yeah. his wife and then I just, it comes out. It just Good flows after that. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. If you haven't seen him, Helium Comedy Club is where you can see him. I went, uh, I don't know, last time you were here, still one of the best. You you have to feel like you're in a, a really good spot if it's, uh, I want to say autopilot, but there's a negative connotation with that. But at this point, you're, you just go up and just start slaughtering. Like, and I see 8 million comedy shows all the time, and I'm going to kiss your ass a little bit here, a lot of bit here. One of the best sets I've ever seen, just watching you go up well, and have a blast. Thank you very much. It's so fun to see, and hopefully we can go pack it out this time around. Yes, in St. pack Louis. it out. You were, uh, you were dealing with some blues playoffs or something last time. Oh, I was, that's right. I was, I that. I yeah. was, I was I forgot about livid. That. It, like, yeah. Personally, I was like, so many people are missing this stuff right yeah. now. It's one of those things. I also... The girl, uh, a girl, I brought a girl to you, Joey Diaz, and uh, Dave Attell were the first ever three comedy shows she'd seen. Yeah. And then I tried to take her to a local, like, you know, up and coming thing. Yeah. And she's like, what is this shit? Yeah, right. Right. So you're also responsible for that. Who's better than that. Attell? Attell's the best. I and that seems to be the, I mean, everyone we bring in, like, he's, what he's is it fantastic. about the I mean, I, not, It's tough grading comics to a degree, like, at, the, at a certain level. I don't, and maybe I have preferences or something that would look into, but... I think when you got when you're on that level that you are, it tells on that several others are. It's just, it's tough. It's like a point one, point two. I don't yeah. know. I can't rank. And you but guys, he's you very see, good. And you seem more comfortable. Like, and not that you have never been comfortable before in your previous sets, but it seems like guys like yourself and Atel are now when you're on stage, and maybe it just comes from life experiences. You're just more comfortable than probably maybe at any point in your career. What maybe leads to that? Just. Look, I'm older and I've yeah, gone through a lot just, of shit. Yeah, it's just as they say in sports, it's just uh, taking reps. Yeah. You know, you do it enough times. Um, but it's also when you stop writing, then you get mm. nervous again because you're just up there and it doesn't feel fresh. Right. I find that like as long as I've got jokes in my pocket that I've been working on that I'm trying, right. then I feel really comfortable and energized and I do my best shows. Right. So, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Crazy. And it's still about <coughs> what are the jokes that I just wrote? How can I get better, you know? Are they drilling teeth? Or I can't believe, like, this is hilarious. Like, this is so great. I hope the mics are picking this up. It is so fantastic. <laughs> They're probably of course, not. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go check it out? You want to go yeah. see we can Facebook Live? This is yeah. we investigate Greg Fitzsimmons go walking into a wood shop. I, I think you thought this only happened at Corolla's place, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so what what are your plans? Uh, so hopefully crashing gets picked up. You go uh, you go forward with that. Are you have any other TV shows you're going to start working on? We were talking about how Roseanne reeled in, like, what, Norm MacDonald and a bunch of different people. Wanda, Wanda Sykes. 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 Wanda yeah. Sykes, yeah. Like Whitney Sang. Cummings. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, that's an a, insane writer's room that's for pretty a reboot. Serious. That's when impressive. Is that going to finally launch? I don't know. They've been working on it for like a year. Yeah, you would think, especially with Netflix, I mean, they kind of turn things around. I hear she's nuts. You hear. I you know, no, you've known I, I her. mean, you know she's nuts, but okay. then you wonder, well, there was a time lapse. Maybe she got right. it together, but I hear Does she crazy. Live, doesn't she live on like a thing in Hawaii, like yeah. a plantation? Like for real. Like, yeah, I had her on my podcast not too long ago. I, I'm pretty sure I listened to that. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's weird. <sighs> Is it weird whenever you when you kind of was Bob Zamuda the same way, interviewing him or was that kind of fun? That was fun. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. Staged walkout. No, that was real. That was real. Yeah. Okay. Or was it? Ooh. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Look it was at real. Him. He's a showman. <laughs> yeah. So whenever you're talking, we deal with that. We get so lucky because we get so many good, coherent people that need to get people to come to their comedy shows or whatever. That's their stop off here. Whatever you're breaking it down with somebody like Roseanne that is on your, she probably sees herself way above you or at your level at oh, least. Oh, no, she wasn't like that at all. She wasn't, well, good. Well, she had an agenda when she came in because at the time she was running for president, I think. I think she was running for president. Okay. So it was that whole thing where she came in and it was really about the pot ticket. She was Right. And uh, so we, we talked politics more than, we didn't go back in time. It wasn't a Mark Maron interview where we talked about when she was at the comedy store and sure. probably more interesting stuff 
Um, I felt like I was, I was more servicing her agenda than I was my own, which I, I hate to do. Of course, y- you've had I, a few. You gotta do that sometimes. Yeah, I do it sometimes. But very rarely do I yeah. do that, but it has to be a really big name. And then she came in, and I mean, it was a good conversation. It's just that um, it. I don't like when someone's got a project to promote. I see. Like, I get it. We all have a project. Right. I'm going to plug it. Right. But let's not talk about it for an hour. Right, let's, exactly. Our actors the worst hang. at that. I, we get spoiled because we get to talk to comics that are funny yeah. and go run with it and whatever. If you get an actor or a musician, I feel like you're going to maybe think of them, oh, we have all these other great interviews yeah. with comics. It's not always the case I at find all. the key is to just say awkward, aggressive stuff to them, it's and good. then they get off their game. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you just keep, keep pushing them. Right. You just keep pushing them. Not hard, just, just enough. enough. Make fun of their wardrobe. Make fun of their wardrobe. Uh-huh. Or if they, if they start going into their spiel, just call them on it, you know? <laughs> That's and, a way to be. Yeah, because, you know, the listeners expect that. They want, they want to hear, like, yeah. people talking in a real way. Right. And when it gets canned, I can just hear people, you know, going to... Check the stats. ...the next uh, podcast. Worst guest you've ever had on the podcast. You're very honest. I, I feel like you're going to give a, a decent answer here. I had uh, Rob Corddry's brother, Nate. You know Nate yeah. Corddry? Yeah. yeah. He's on a sitcom. And we just, I was fucking with him and. Wasn't feeling it. He wasn't feeling it. Like he just didn't get the tone that oh, I was wow. going for. <laughs> Which is weird. And right? we got in, we got into it on the air. Oh, wow. And then it was like a, twi- and then there was a Twitter war that followed it. Yep. That's the only like negative experience I've ever had. Because you're think. choosing to be there, right? It's fun. You're both like in the comedy well, business. Because I like, know Rob so well. He's right. like a regular guest on my show. We hang out. Right. Yep. And so when you when you hang with somebody's brother, you just, I went to immediate intimacy because of the brother. Yes. And I maybe it was my mistake. I probably didn't build up a rapport that I should have first. I went straight to busting his balls and he wasn't having it. Oh, wow. We've been lucky too. Everybody's generally pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. So that you Dan have a good Carolla time. guy. I didn't care too He's much. He's a piece of him. shit. Right? Hey, what are you? Uh, it's an important weekend uh, in America, and I'm curious to wonder <laughs> what are you wearing to see Black Panther this weekend? Oh, that's right. Yes. Are you? With the, I've got Chris in a daishiki, and, uh-huh. but I'm curious. Uh, obviously, you having many black friends, what are you right. wearing to your Great Black Panther? Simmons. I want to dress really black, so I'm going to go with like <laughs> faded black jeans, a fucking. <laughs> Plaid shirt, uh-huh. unbuttoned with snaps on it, right, and a seafarer's hat. Yep. I want to, you know, I want to keep it real. <laughs> Greg, that's good for you. Maybe grow on a hipster beard. <laughs> Perfect answer. Look at him. You can get this. Like this is literally just like he's. I don't even have to give material, right? You just start working it out. <laughs> that's what you can do tomorrow when you're at the mall. You can go see Black Panther. No brand sneakers. <laughs> no brand. <laughs> We need to get him. I want Greg Fitzsimmons, and we're going to send our friends from Media Outlaws with him. We need we Greg see. opening night at the Blackest Theater in uh, town. I need yeah. you there, yeah. Grapefruit Simmons. That Let's make that happen. <laughs> I'm selling T-shirts now, Grapefruit Simmons. Are you? <laughs> starting in a week or two. I don't know if you know the no, story. No, I've heard the story. That's uh, well, tell it. We got to tell everybody. Okay. Well, yeah. well, I mean, you were kind of leading with the punchline, but there was a woman who called the, the uh, Boston Comedy Connection years ago, like 20 years ago. <laughs> And uh, we're, we're going to assume she was an overweight black woman for the sake of the story. Sure, makes sense to me. And she called in and she goes, uh, she goes, who's on the show tonight? She was, was from that? the 19th century. <laughs> uh, she was plantation. Uh-huh. And uh, she said, who on the show tonight? And they said, well, it's Anthony Clark, Jackie Flynn, and Greg Fitzsimmons. And she goes, is Grapefruit Simmons the headliner? <laughs> and so everybody from that club started calling me Grapefruit for years. And it kind of stuck. So, so one of my fans drew uh, drew art, and it's like it's a grapefruit head with my glasses and hat on, and grapefruit Simmons written underneath it. So we're gonna be selling those pretty soon. You you could headline so many old school R and B cruises. Oh yeah, like if oh, if you would yeah. if you would just go with grapefruit yeah, Simmons, the yeah. citrus cruise. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's a great note to end on. The Perfect. Citrus Cruise. Yeah. Go see Greg. Helium Comedy Club all weekend long. Greg, thanks for stopping by, thanks guys. Thanks so much. Great seeing you guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Go see him. We're going to check him out tonight. Thanks, guys.